every five minutes after 10 o'clock. Uh, Matt Gibbs is here from Sunrise Automotive. We're talking radio stuff. Hey, good morning, Matt. Morning, Larry. What's the story this morning? There always is. Oh, yeah. Uh, Jeep. Yeah. The crown jewel of Fiat Chrysler and a worldwide symbol of American military and manufacturing might has an interested Chinese suitor. The name of the company that wants to buy and make Jeeps is called Great Wall. Great Wall? That's the name. Great Wall. Can you imagine driving a car called the Great Wall? And they drive it across the Great Wall of China. <laughs> or like you're in traffic. If there's a bunch of them, you're in a Great Wall. <laughs> you're in a Great Wall of traffic. Huh. Anyway, uh, yeah. Does that matter to you as a, as a car guy? Where they're made. A lot of people, it's very important. When I had my Suzuki, we had one of the uh, elder gentlemen who comes in during the veteran show who asked me what kind of car I drive. And I said a Suzuki, not knowing it was going to be offensive to him. He was offended because he, no, no, you don't. That's me. <laughs> Did I say something wrong? <laughs> Ding! But anyway, does that matter to you? And see, now I drive a Buick, so this is an American car. Yes. So, okay, so I'm okay. Where is so, it made? Like Detroit or something? No, nah, I don't think it's made in Detroit. <laughs> I don't think anything's made in Detroit anymore. Where is my car? Where was my car made? Uh, I, I'm not sure. There's in parts, America? In Amer yeah, in the United States. Although parts of it, parts of it are made yeah. all over the world. But does it matter to you um, as a mechanic? And did it ever matter? Like, is it, or have times changed? Well, I mean, back in the day, you know, it was um, there. There was a pride about. American made cars, you know. Oh no, no, I don't mean that part. No, yeah. for me. Oh, for you, okay. For me, and um, and as as time has changed, you know, and I I don't know if it's because because you just become complacent, you know what I'm saying? Um, being that I work on cars, and there are some cars I like to work on, and then there's some cars I love to work on, and then there's some cars I hate to work on. And and does that whole metric tool thing versus whatever the other thing is the does standard. that standard does that get in the way sometimes? No, no. It, it, it no. I mean, once you learn it, you learn it. You know, it's just like it, it's 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 kind of like um, you know. I would struggle right now if this was a Spanish show and we had to speak Spanish because <laughs> I couldn't do it. <laughs> you and know? Me too. But so I would really struggle doing I, that. Something I can like ask that. you what your name is and what time is it. And and you know it's kind of like that. Once you, once you once you're in that, once you once you live that, once you become a part of that, mm. it learning the metric stuff is is kind of like learning a whole another language. And once you understand it and you can speak it and you can see it and you can you know you just right. you just right. go right. with it. But for somebody that that doesn't understand, you know that that uh, a nine thirty seconds. And a seven millimeter is the exact same thing. An eight millimeter and five sixteenths is the same exact thing. Wow, you know, I never and, knew that. Right, and and twenty one millimeters is the same thing as thirteen sixteenths. Well, once you learn those those things, right, right, right. then then it's it's it it's it's you know you learn it you, and you know it and you so, flow in it. So I wondered if if when somebody who's trying to do their own mechanic work uh, messes up using the wrong sign, let's say they're using a standard. And it should be a metric, and they end up, what do you call it? Oh, stripping it or stripping it. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I mean, if but if you're doing it yourself, and you don't, and, and it's not something you do every day, and you don't understand that, you know, this is actually a 13 millimeter bolt, not a half inch bolt. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And and you, you know, you just pay attention, put the tool yeah, on it, and yeah. make sure it's on there tight. You know, I mean, it's, there's a little common sense that you need to use too. So, and the thing that that dr used to drive us crazy was, especially in American-made cars, a lot of the bolts are standard, so, you know, uh, Americanized, and a lot of the bolts are metric. So you there's, mm. you know, um, that that kind of gets kind of drives you goofy sometimes. At least if you're working on a Japanese car, you know that every bolt on it is metric. Uh -huh, if you're working right. on an American-made car, it could be anything. It could be whatever. <laughs> You know, so oh my god! So you got to you know, but but and how do you know which ones? Because you know, most of them uh, screw off the one way.
But do we have the reverse threading? What do they call it? Left-handed ha thread. Thank you. How how do you know which ones are which? You just you learn <laughs> by by a lot of times you learn by error. And you're breaking and something. You break something off. Oh my! I watched gosh. a guy build a rear end one time, and he's pulling the ring gear, the 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 bolts that hold the ring gear to the case to the carrier, and he's just yeah, da, 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 I mean, just got a big old gun on there. Oh and he's like, no! Pow. Oh no! And he's like, oh, these are shear bolts. I said, no, they're not, you idiot. They're left-handed thread. Oh no! <laughs> and 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 the reason Chrysler he broke them all off. He broke them all. Well, he broke off most of them until I went over there and said, you know, hey, uh, you know, I know the old thing, Lucy, lefty, righty. <laughs> tidy thing but it's it doesn't work here you know and chrysler back in the day on one side of the cars the lug nuts were left-handed thread uh one side was left-handed thread one oh, side was right no. thread. yeah so so yeah and that's something the user is supposed to know how to do yeah and then a lot of times if you don't know you find out real quick kind of thing we were talking this way about who taught you what who taught you how to change a car tire a tire uh, who changed a tire your dad I just taught myself how to change a tire oh really the, the or guy, a wheel, wheel, uh, with the lug nut thing. Whatever. Yeah, that, I probably just taught myself, or my dad did when I was, you know, little. My dad, my my dad was a, uh, and this is my biological. I had two dads. Uh -huh. This is my biological dad. He was a a big time car guy. I mean, he restored cars, and he 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 definitely is where I got my mechanical gene from. Uh -huh. And uh, so, ever since I was a little kid. You know, when I was a little kid, I used to go out there and watch him work on his uh -huh, car uh -huh. and stuff like that. No. But the guy that, that I contribute to helping me get to where I am today, there's, you know, everybody has that mentor, right, that, right, that right. guy that, or that person that just kind of took you under his wing. He was just an old, when I when I started working at the, at the dealership when I was 17 years old, his name was Bob Eddy. And he was such a grumpy old dude <laughs> that they literally had to move him away from <laughs> oh. everybody else. And he was in this one little corner over on the other side of the shop where no – and you weren't allowed to go over there. You, you were respected him, though. Well, I didn't – Sounds I, like. Sounds like you learned I didn't even him. know who he was. Well, what happened was I was over there working on a car one day, and this, this old grumpy guy that you're never supposed to mess with, <laughs> he comes over to me and he – basically yells at me to come over there and find this spring that he had lost when he was doing a, a <laughs> steering column he was like how old know, were you i was 17 oh my god and he's like boy he didn't he called me kid that's what he called me kid get over here get over here kid can picture this <laughs> and he's like i can't find this spring so i found the spring and, he, and then he's like well put it in there so i put it in there and he's like okay now do this not that way <laughs> i get back over there to your side of the shop and then the next day he did the same thing and next thing he's yelling at me to kid go get your toolbox and bring it over here i'm gonna teach you some stuff oh my god and then he and he did maybe he was nicer than he seemed he he was a really great guy uh, and and he really he knew that he was coming to the end of his career and i was the first and the only person he ever he ever he just he just said until i i leave i'm going to teach you what i know and 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 he did that's a wonderful story. I love that story. And you know, and I kind of wish I just hired a young guy. He just starts today. Uh -huh. uh, yesterday was his first day, uh -huh. and he's got the he's he's a young guy. He 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 uh, he has that passion. You have to have a passion to do this. Right. It's not the cleanest job in the world. I go home and my wife says, "Go take a shower because you stink." <laughs> you know, so so it's hot, and yeah, it's, yeah. it's hard, it's greasy. Ooh, and we're gonna go to commercial and. Oh. So, sorry, I didn't mean for that to interrupt <laughs> you. All right, and, and you do have some people calling in. I apologize, I didn't get to the uh, calls, but we'll do that on the other side of the break. Everybody, just be patient. Thank you for your patience. I, I love that story. That's that's a touching story. It's emotional, actually. I, I felt an emotion coming from you. All right. We'll be right back. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. On this Tuesday, sunshine mixing with clouds with a thunderstorm around in the afternoon high 90 to 94. And partly cloudy Tuesday night, there can be a shower or two near the coast early. And perhaps a thunderstorm there late, low 73 and 80 on the coast. Sunshine and some clouds for Wednesday with an afternoon thunderstorm across the interior, high 89 to 93. Thursday, more clouds and sun with a shower and heavy thunderstorm, high 88 to 92. 
From the Florida Weather Center, I'm Joe Lundberg. Hang tough, baby. It's rodeo time in Ocala. The 35th Annual Ocala Shrine Pro Rodeo returns September 1st and 2nd, 7.30 nightly. Witness America's number one sport in the greatest show on dirt as cowboys ride to help children walk. It all happens rain or shine in the covered arena at the Southeastern Livestock Pavilion. For tickets and information, call 352-402-8808. Don't miss the rodeo in Ocala. Keep up with what's going on in the downtown area with Ocala Downtown Newspaper. Delivering thousands of newspapers to businesses in the downtown area, Ocala Downtown is there to keep you informed. They even have Tom's Picks, a free referral for people who are looking for a company to do work for them. Tom's Picks will refer the company that fits your needs. And all we ask in return is that you tell them where you heard about it. It's simple. For more info, just call Tom's Picks, 352-804-1223, and pick up your copy of the Downtown Ocala Newspaper today. Now read Ocala Downtown Newspaper online. Coming this and every second Friday of the month at 11 a.m. is Trinity Healthcare Medical Center with your host, Dr. David Kuhn. Trinity Healthcare Medical Center is Ocala's only progressive primary care clinic. Be sure to listen in and also check their website at thcmc.com. Then call them with your questions at 512-0000. That's 512-0000. That's every second Friday at 11 a.m. for Trinity Healthcare Medical Center here on The Source WOCA. Here is your 30-second news brief. A statewide prison lockdown enacted last week was lifted yesterday. A tropical disturbance could bring downpours to Marion County this evening. Local flight schools are saying President Trump's plan to privatize air traffic control could decimate Florida's flight training industry and exasperate a pilot shortage. And a walking trail has been named in honor of 96-year-old William James, Marion County Public Schools' first African-American custodian supervisor. And that is your news brief from The Source. If you or a loved one is suffering with knee, shoulder, neck, back pain, or tennis elbow, and would like to learn how to get out of pain, go to Regenetic.com. Then listen in on the first and third Thursday at 10 a.m. to the people that give you the regenerative medical solutions to your pain. Regenetic, first and third Thursdays, 10 a.m. here on WOCA 96.3 FM, 1370 a.m. The Source, Regenetic.com. Cars are cars all over the world. <laughs> cars are cars all over yes, the world. Yes, they are. Cars are cars. Engine in the front. Engine in the front. Jack in the back. <laughs> Jack in the Wheels back. take the front. Yeah, Jack gets all <laughs> mad because he's in the trunk all the time. <laughs> all right. I am so sorry. Uh, the phone has been ringing and I haven't taken these calls, so let's just do some of these calls. Um, do I have one already on here? Good morning. You're on the air with Matt. Thank you for calling. Oh, good morning, Matt. Sunny calling. I can remember I had a 65 Plymouth Valiant, and it had that uh, left-handed lug nuts, and that was on the right side of the car. Oh, no. And from what I remember, is on the end of the stud, it had a little L. Yep, so it did. At the end of the stud. And uh, I guess uh, if you knew what you were looking at, you knew you had a left-handed nut that had to come off. That's right. So, that was the key there, if you knew. <laughs> well, anyway, reason for that was I understood that there was a period of time that uh, the lug nuts would loosen up on, on these vehicles, and that was Chrysler's way to solve that problem. Yep, that's exactly so, right. Anyway, time marches on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank have you, a good day. You Thanks too, for the programming, and take care. Thank you. So, are you anybody's mentor at the shop right now? Well, that's what I was gonna. That's what I was saying. I just hired this guy yesterday, and and it's like, is it time for me? Is it my time to start mentoring myself? Well, why wouldn't it be? I, I am not a teacher. Yeah, but I'm guessing along the way you've been mentoring anybody who's worked with you. Um. Some people would say that I yell at the people that I've been working with. So you're the grumpy old guy now. <laughs> so no, actually, I was the grumpy old guy, but I, I've I've come out. Of, I've grown up, and I've come out of that. I'm not as demanding. And so, whatever happened to your grumpy old guy? Do you know? He passed away. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like shortly after he retired. Um, it was within. 10 what years. was he a good mechanic? I he mean, he was awesome. That's why they kept him. Oh, you, yeah. you don't keep a grumpy guy unless he's good at what he does. Yeah, he he was really good at what he does. Hmm really good I, I can i guess something about him yeah. he did not like 
the computer technology no, coming into absolutely it. not. Uh, yeah. That was my that was my blessing. None of the guys. I worked in a geriatric dealership. I, all, <laughs> all these guys were just old timers. Oh no! And when they came out with computer systems, and they came out and they did away with carburation and went fuel injection, and no more distributors, no more points, no more electronic this, no more that. And that that was my that was my blessing. That it just opened the door wide. Everybody in the shop said, "Give it to the kid." He. he let him learn. This Did, stuff. Was there any other kid? I mean, were you the only I was young the person? Only young person. Oh my there. gosh! Did you ever wish they would just stop being so stubborn and learn because you're getting too much work? No, because no. we see in in our business, you get paid and you make. You don't get paid by the hour. You get paid by the job. In other words, you know, we have a book that we look at, and if it pays three, if it calls for three hours to put that water pump on this car, right, right, that's right. what you got paid. I got back well, in the day, I got nine dollars an hour, a flat rate hour. Okay, so if that water pump, if it calls for three hours, so I got paid twenty seven dollars to put that water pump on, right? Me. Now, if it took me five hours to put that water pump on, I got paid twenty-seven dollars. Oh if it took me gosh. an hour and a half to put that gotcha. water pump on, yeah, I got yeah, paid yeah. twenty-seven dollars. So I didn't want nobody to learn this stuff. I wanted to do every job that came into the place. So, in a way, that brings me back to something you told me in, in a previous show, where uh, people would come to apply for a job at Sunrise Automotive, and they had worked at dealerships or at um, uh, franchise garages. Okay, and they will to impress you say i can change nine hundred dollars worth of starters in a, in a day or something yeah. like that right mm -hmm. and, and you didn't want to hear that but it, that's the the world they were living in yeah that a lot of the franchise companies that's you know you go in you go in for a brake job and and okay they're and, they, and they're running a special 59.95 for a front brake job right right but then you go in and they want to sell you the calipers and the hoses and the springs and the this and the rotors and so the wait that. a minute wait a minute this means you could hire me <clears throat> i'm waiting for you to laugh okay this means you could hire me because uh, you could say larry okay you're working for me now and uh, you're going to change that the brakes on that truck okay i could take a week to do it right and i would get paid whatever you pay somebody to change brakes on a truck which yeah. probably takes what an hour an hour and a half okay Put so let's just say i paid you twenty dollars <laughs> an hour and, and it took you so here you go at the so friday I, I give you a check for thirty dollars <laughs> and, and your customers meanwhile so so, so mad. mad at you <laughs> who's that new guy you got well you still work at the radio show felt bad for him but that's how that's how in our industry that's how that's how we make our money. You know, in this in this business, when we started shifting over to computers, I thought, well, I'm done because you mean you don't cut tape anymore? You mean you do it on this thing? What? There's no actual tape. There's no razor blades. You know, all of that was like a little bit kind of hard to get my head around. Now yeah. it's easy, but right now you just you did it. Yeah. You you accepted the challenge, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's what we have to do, especially nowadays. Because the technology on these cars is changing so, I know, and it's I, crazy. I don't know how. Okay, when you when you talk about, uh, and this comes up a lot, the the movement for all electric vehicles, and and I know they say it's years and years ahead, but they're going to start fining people for not having electric cars, which is an incentive to get an electric car. How is that going to work on an RV? It's it, like these big heavy vehicles that people buy, like a big RV. How is a battery going to work that thing? I have no idea. It's kind of heavy, isn't it? Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of a load. Or, or, or well, I mean, look at the the trucking industry in in America. I mean, everything that we get well, comes comes off a semi. Yeah, well, I would think that they would keep that on diesel. Well, and if they're going to do that, a lot of the, maybe the motorhomes will make a switch to more of the diesel pushers oh, okay. than the okay. gas pullers. So you know, I you know because I I was watching this video. Because I guess I have this like daydream that one day I'll have an RV. I was watching this video on RVs, and the guy was saying, "Look, this 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 is one get gets ten miles to a gallon, and the other one gets only eight miles to a gallon." And he says, "But to be to be honest with you, the eight mile a gallon is so much better, and it's only two miles a gallon." He said, "It's it'll cost you two hundred dollars more to cross the country. That's it." He right. said, but it's a way better vehicle. It's a way stronger engine. He was carrying on about it. And I thought, well, I never thought of it that way. But environmentalists would probably hate him. 
because you're spending more, you're using more gasoline. Right. And and then, but then there's another side of the government that that or people that would love him. That is for petroleum. That is for oil. Yeah. That, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So it, it, you know, I guess at the end of the day, it's like, okay, which side of this coin puts more coins in my pocket, kind of thing. You know, mm-hmm. it mm-hmm. it just seems like every time we get into discussions about uh, energy and right. transportation, it, it's it's like it's. It's, it always comes down to dollars and cents. Now, there are the people, the people, the general public, right. but it, there's those that buy these alternative fuel cars, and they don't care that they're spending an extra twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 for the same car they could get that runs on gasoline, $30,000 less or whatever, but because they're helping the environment, they're willing to spend sure. the extra money. Right, right. For those folks, it, I, this, is what, this is my contribution to the environment. Was a, there was another news story this morning. I'll see if I can find it. It was. Uh, I'll just tell you what it was. There was this guy. He was here in in Florida. Uh, he was drunk apparently, and uh, he like crashed into eighteen cars trying to park his SUV. <laughs> Isn't that something? I mean, just eighteen people had their. Was, they said it looked like a junkyard when they got there to, to the parking lot. He just kept backing and uh, phoning him back and just kept hitting cars. Yeah, he must have been drunk. Yeah. Oh, well, they said he was. Well, under the influence is what they yeah, say. Okay. Of something. Um, we we were talking the other day about how when you put your VIN number in the Google, you can now find out the history of your car. Um, do you use that, and, and is that reliable? Uh, I use it sometimes when I'm looking at buying a car. Sometimes I'll do it. Um, but we have like auto check. A lot of people use Carfax. Is that know? more reliable than simply Google? No, it's it's actually none of it can be reliable. I've seen cars that have been cut in half and welded back together. That if you Carfax them, auto check them, they come up with a perfectly oh, clean, because nobody, spotless record. Oh, okay. So it all amounts to how much was actually documented. What, exactly. That's uh, we and at sunrise. If if you bring your car in for service. Um, Every night, Carfax takes all that we did that day and and puts it on that. Because you're documenting everything. We document yeah. everything. So so if 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 one of my customers wants to sell a car and and someone runs a Carfax on it, every oil change, every service, everything that was done to that car is going to show up mm-hmm. on the history of the Carfax. By the way, I, I locked my keys in my car. Did I tell you this story already? No. And I was at Barnes and Noble. I got out and I said. Ah, oh, they're in there. So I called my insurance guy, and they sent out a tow guy, and uh, it took about an hour to get there, which I was fine with because they told me in advance it's going to be about an hour. And uh, the guy opened up my car in probably a minute, if if not less. It was unbelievable how quickly he did it. I just need to buy it. Well, he had like a little pillow that inflates. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I I I, I get to get one of them. But just then what would I do? Keep it in the glove compartment? Yeah. Keep it. <laughs> yeah. I keep one in my car all the time. It, it, after church, you'd be surprised how many people lock their keys in their cars. Oh, so you're the guy. Yeah. Everybody, can you jump start them? So I got a little jump oh, box in my man. car. I got oh. my kit to open up doors. This is your life. That's what we do. No matter where you go, no you're, you're you the go. car guy. Yep. You could be in Paris. I don't want to be in Paris. You could be, what What country would you like to be? Because, you know, cars are cars all over the world. Cars are cars <laughs> all over the world. Engine in the front. <laughs> all right, if you want to call Matt to get your car fixed, or if you want to buy a new one, Crossroad Auto Sales. I got my car from Matt, and I got my car fixed from Matt, and uh, everything is beautiful, wonderful. There they are, cars are cars all over the world. Uh, so where are you? Matt, where are you? I'm right here, brother. <laughs> I'm right here singing this song. Got this jingle in my head. <laughs> trying to get your music on you. Get, give your address. What did you give you? Okay, let's, let's, let's tell everybody where I'm at. I am at 1800 <laughs> Northwest 10th Street here in Ocala, Florida, and you can reach me at 352 690 1993. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. I'm Lillian Wu. Remains of missing U.S. Navy sailors have been found. One discovered by the Malaysian Navy in sealed compartments. We have-